So good afternoon, I'm Rob McCammon, the Director of Product Management for Cleversafe. And I'd like to talk to you about how one of our customers is using the Cleversafe Dispersed Storage Network to um, provide a general purpose cloud storage service. So in preparing to uh, meet this customer's market requirements, what makes this use case interesting and unique is that um, there's a wide diversity of data. So imagine that this is a service that people are using to back up whatever files they have on their PC. So who knows what kind of files I have, what size the files are, I've got big files, I've got small files. Compared to an archive or an active archive or even a backup, uh, this data is accessed more frequently. It's written more frequently, it's read more frequently. Um, most applications associated with these kind of services uh, use thumbnail images as an important part of their user interface. So those thumbnails actually change the profile of the storage workload in a significant way by uh, adding a lot more you know, relatively small files into the mix. If you imagine thumbnails for pictures, you might have a two or five megabyte picture, but for each one of those, you could have uh, three thumbnails of different size and resolution, a, a 10K byte, a 40K byte, and a 100K byte would be typical of what some of our customers have. Um, if you're in this general purpose cloud storage business, uh, obviously scalability is key. You want to be able to aggregate the requirements of many, many, many different users uh, and the same kind of service always available characteristic that we just talked about for an internal IT service provider is really important here. But the key thing that makes customers like this different for us is this change in the workload. More smaller files relative to larger files, more frequently accessed. So, um, you know, this is a pretty general look at what a DSNet deployment at a customer uh, look, looks like. They've got users. Those users are usually interacting with a number of application servers. Those application servers are reading and writing data to the DSNet through the, through the accessors onto all the slice stores. And that data is going into one or more different vaults, which are, again, these logical containers that exist on the storage pool. Um, to date, we've had really two different um, models of storage nodes that most of our customers use. And these large scale customers primarily use our high density model, which we call the Slice Store 1440. It's a 4U uh, storage server that can accommodate 48 drives of up to four terabytes each. So you can have 192 terabytes of storage per server uh, in one of these Slice Store 1440s. But for this workload, we found that uh, the performance of the Slice Store 1440 wasn't fully up to what was sometimes required for this kind of an application. So I'm going to talk about some new products that we have available that are used in this kind of a customer scenario that provide a higher level of performance. The first one we call the Slice Store 2440. It's physically the same as the Slice Store 1440. It's 4U, 48 drives, but it's faster. It's got uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet, um, faster processor, more memory, uh, additional host bus adapter, just to drive more throughput and lower latency uh, out of that storage node. Uh, on top of that, we've introduced uh, an all SSD based slice store, the Slice Store 4100, which is a 1U storage node that has eight uh, SSDs in it that provides you know, very uh, high level performance for handling things like this thumbnail workload. So you've got a lot of very small files that you need to access very frequently that are part of your um, overall workload. So what you can do in your DSNet is you can create multiple storage pools. A storage pool uh, needs to be homogenous in terms of the type of slice stores that you have. So you could have one storage pool made from slice store 2440s that are storing your medium and large size files, and you could have one storage pool made of these SSD-based Slice Store 4100s that are storing small files, thumbnail images, uh, things similar to that, and providing the lower latency access 
that's necessary to, uh, for example, support the, the need of the user interface to access these thumbnail files very frequently and put this all into one, uh, one DSNet, manage it in one way under one system. Now, before we introduced these products, we had customers who had these same requirements. What they were doing was using the DSNet to store most of their data, which consisted of larger files. And then they had another separate storage system from some other supplier handling things like the thumbnail. So the benefit to them is uh, blend this all together into one system. And then on top of that, we've also introduced a software feature, a different configuration of a vault, which we call a cache vault as opposed to a standard vault. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about what the difference uh, is in a cache vault and what its benefits are as well. So here's uh, some specs on the Slice Store 4100. Like I said, it's all SSD based. Uh, it's a one use server. Uh, you can see the, the kind of horsepower that it provides. Now, it's intended to be used, as I said, in a, in a manner complementary to the higher capacity slice stores. We don't necessarily envision or intend for someone to have a DS net of all these uh, one U SSD slice stores. It's more intended to complement the high density, high capacity slice stores in a separate storage pool to handle that part of the workload that's frequently accessed smaller objects. Uh, and in terms of objects per second, it delivers about 10 times more objects per second, so an order of magnitude increase compared to the higher capacity slice stores, which makes all the difference in the world for us uh, in terms of being able to support this kind of a workload uh, more all-inclusively within the DS net. Um, if you look at the, the, the loading of a storage system, I'm sure you're all very familiar with this, if you have a lot of small objects, what you do tends to be limited by how many objects per second you can deliver. If you have a lot of large objects, you tend to be limited by how much throughput you can deliver. You never get to your throughput limit with a lot of small objects, typically because the objects per second limit uh, times the small objects doesn't saturate your, your network connection. Are so, there use cases where you use both types? I, I probably, probably not, but. No, there's definitely, um, so photo storage would be a use case where you'd use both types. You would direct these. The same namespace? I mean. Um, separate, separate vaults, separate storage pools. Um, so in a sense, separate namespaces for the two data sets, but one physical, one storage network managed by one manager, uh, configured in a consistent way, monitored yeah, in a consistent way. I mean, you way. wouldn't use them through each other, right? Yeah, they're not inter they're not you're intermingled, not if you will. Both types at the same Correct. time. Correct. Yeah. Correct. You'd create you create some vaults on Slice Store twenty four forties and some other vaults on Slice Store forty one hundreds. Okay, but the <clears throat> these thumbnail objects, I mean, you're not using the same erasure code model that um, you are with the large objects, are you? Well, you 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 typically would not. You typically would not. You could if you had thumbnails wouldn't be a good example, but if you had some data that you wanted to erase your code. You certainly could do that using these slice stores, and you would still get access to them with 10 times the objects per second. But in the case of thumbnails in particular, uh, many customers are using this other feature, which I'm going to try called uh, Cache Vault, and choosing to not erase your code that data, because um, if something would happen and they would lose that data, it's easy for them to recreate it from the original image. Right, and the, and the latency of a, of a accumulating all of the slices when they're that small. It just the efficiency falls off. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, um, the philosophy behind these three different products, the Slice Store 4100, the Slice Store 2440, and the software configuration, which I call a cash vault, is really to give more flexibility. So, you know, every customer that we engage with, their, obviously their workload is unique. Their object file size distribution is unique to them. Their read-write mix is unique to them. Their latency requirements, their throughput requirements, their reliability requirements are unique to them. By kind of putting more blades on our Swiss Army knife of dispersed storage, uh, we're able to provide a, a better fit to these varying and, and different requirements on a customer by customer basis. So this is the Slice Store 2440. Uh, as I mentioned again, this is the 
high capacity storage node like our Slice Store 1440, but in a, a slightly higher performance version. So it's still a 4U mm -hmm. server, up to 48 4 terabyte drives. Um, Customers could choose this instead of the 1440 if they had a more demanding performance uh, workload, a more active read-write workload maybe. They might use 1440s in one storage pool and 2440s in another storage pool. Um, compared to the 1440, so the most directly comparable product, this product has five times the throughput and four times the object mm -hmm. per second. So, you know, if you can, and it's more expensive. So if you think of kind of a you know, price performance range, what we're doing here, is uh, expanding the range of what we offer with some higher price performance mm -hmm. options to address some of these other uh, use cases. And then the cache vault is essentially a vault with no uh, erasure coding. So this gives you uh, a, a way to store data where the latency is gonna be lower because you're not doing any erasure coding. The objects per second that you can deliver is gonna be higher as a result. But there's no redundancy. When you store your data in a cache vault, if one of the drives that that cache vault is provisioned on fails, you're going to lose some data. Now, so, so I have my choice between fully erasure coded and completely unprotected. You can create multiple cache vaults and replicate the data in more than one cache vault if you would like. So if you want to make two copies. Okay, so I can mirror. Correct. You want to make three copies. You, you ha certainly have the flexibility to do that. So. Um, it gives you, again, uh, uh, depending on your workload, it might make more sense for these small files to not erase your code them, but make three copies because they don't add up to that much of your overall storage requirement while using the very flexible erasure coding to handle uh, what's contributing the most to your total capacity requirements. So on uh, equivalent hardware, a cache vault compared to a standard vault gives you about 10 times the objects per second. If you compare a standard vault on a Slice Store 1440, our most cost-effective capacity-optimized node, to a cache vault on a Slice Store 4100, it's 100 times the objects per second. So uh, again, it's just a different, different blade in the, in the Swiss Army knife that uh, enables us to extend our range and include in a DSNet some workloads that without these products, uh, would have had performance requirements that we would not have been able to meet. And this has been very important for this general purpose uh, cloud storage kind of customer. And the benefits that they see are they can get access to these multiple price performance options, some based on hardware, some based on software, all in a single system. Um, they can bring the benefits, the cost benefits of, of what we offer for large-scale storage to more demanding uh, workloads and new applications. <laughs>